I'm currently the principal investigator on the core study, the, the main project for CAFE. So CAFE stands for Community Assessment of Freeway Exposure and Health Study. Our hypothesis is that the people who are more affected by ultrafine particles are the people who are living close to highways. So what we're trying to do is create um, an understanding of the pollution levels in a certain neighborhood. When we first looked at the mortalities for all 351 cities and towns of Massachusetts, what we found was that in eastern Massachusetts, of the 100 cities and towns which surround Boston, that 14 of them had 75% of the excess mortality. And the map of the 14 communities looks like the regional transportation map. Let's take a look inside the plant cell, in the membrane separating the stroma and the thylakoid, where photosynthesis occurs. When light strikes the reaction center of photosystem 2, an electron is excited. Plastiquinone is the electron acceptor, passing it to the B6F complex. This creates a proton gradient, which drives the photophosphorylation to make ATP. Next, photosystem 1 absorbs a photon of light, passing high-energy electrons to ferredoxin. NADP reductase transfers the electrons to produce NADPH from NADP. The electron chain continues, producing nutrients from photons. In the Sykes group, we use scanning tunneling microscopy, or STM, to study chiral interactions on metal surfaces. The STM movie on the left portrays a cluster of asymmetric or chiral molecules moving on a gold surface, while the right image is a schematic aid used to help interpret the data. At the start of the movie, the two R molecules on the left are static, while the S molecule on the right is spinning. As the spinning S molecule approaches the R molecules, the R molecules invert their chirality to become S molecules. They do this by literally flipping over on the surface, akin to flipping a mattress on a bed frame. At the end of the sequence, the three molecules are nested in all R of S type chirality. There are 26 trees in the MeSH database that represent disease terminologies. Here we see all 26 trees, each with different root terms. Each tree is visualized using a triangle. The triangle shows the target gene sets that are associated with each part of the tree. If you hover the mouse on the label for each root, you can see the terminology represented. You can also see dark and light spots on each triangle showing the significance of the association between the node and the target gene set. In the earlier slide, we saw how trends in unemployment rate are related to SNAP participation over time. In this figure, by contrast, 
for just a single year in 1990, you can see the cross-sectional relationship between unemployment rate and SNAP participation. In states with a higher unemployment rate, there tends to be a higher SNAP participation. And in states with a lower unemployment rate, naturally, there tends to be a lower SNAP participation. Just as in the earlier figure, though, it's difficult to attribute cause and effect to this relationship. One wonders about all the other different things that could make one state different from another in terms of its SNAP participation. The earlier technical literature estimating the factors that contribute to SNAP caseload change actually uses variation both over time and across states. And to really understand that type of variation, we need to put this figure into motion. Here you can see economic recession, and then good times, economic expansion. And brace yourself for the economic crisis of the late 2000s, which is different from what we saw before. And there it is. Let's see the real-time evaluation of the bladder of this healthy beagle. We use a linear probe placed in the caudal abdomen and the probe is initially oriented in a longitudinal plane. Notice the distal tip of the spleen on this image. On longitudinal plane, the cranial aspect of the bladder will appear to the left of the screen. The bladder may occasionally appear slightly misshapen by the presence of the adjacent colon. As we proceed caudally, we pass the trigon region and we can see one of the urethral papillae. Moving caudally, the flat elongated prostate is knotted, but the urethra cannot be really well seen. Now, there were some problems with the Big Bang, and inflation came along and solved some of these Big Bang puzzles. And inflation has become the standard cosmological paradigm, and it says, you know what? The universe could have become, begun with some inflationary seed, would have been a tiny, tiny speck, and it would have grown unimaginably large. Okay? This inflating seed grows at a um, super fast rate exponentially and it creates more and more space as it goes along and in fact we, um, when inflation ends that would correspond to a big bang event and you'd get a hot fireball of particles and radiation and from then on the evolution would be the same as in the standard big bang model. But what, uh, what the, uh, researchers realized shortly after inflation was discovered that inflation actually ends in a local region, a local part of this expanding, let's call it an inflationary sea.